So for the flower, what we need to have is a center and I'm just gonna do an oval. And why am I doing an oval? Because I want to have the impression that my flower is looking away, not at me, but a little bit to the side. And most of the flowers um, have five petals. So we are going to do five not perfect little wiggly petals. And also when a flower has petals, pick the petals that are not overlapped by something else. And this will be the petals that you want to do first. And mine are coming outside. So I have two petals that are standing on top. The rest of the petals are overlapping each other, which means I have a partial line or partial petal. So I'm going to create this one here. So there is that. And then I'm gonna create one more right here. And super elementary. Once you start with the petals that are on top, everything else you're pretty much going to fill in. So brushes that I'm gonna use today, very limited. And we have two small round brushes and one angled small round. I think this is three eighths and five and a two. So between the two and the five, this and this can be used absolutely the same way. Um, now the, the um, tip of this one is much better. So this is why I have it here. Otherwise you can seriously do it, um, do something like that with two brushes. So I'm getting my angle brush and my flower background, it's gonna be a very gentle. So I'm gonna be using white, tiny bit of green, and also tiny bit of blue. Now, if you look at the color, this is way too dark and way too blue. So I'm gonna add a little bit more green and still more white. I want to be very, very subtle. Now, what did I do? I over mix my color. So now my green, my blue and my white are completely making a brand new color. So I don't want this. I want those three colors to be present, but not over mixed. So now I have all the colors not over mixed. I can see the streaks of white, the streaks of blue and green. Loading my brush and finding where my flower is pointing at and pretty much I am going just to start. I can do it very very light or I can do it super super heavy. I can grab a little bit more blue on some areas and you can make it any background you want. The reason why I am going with the blue is because that blue is almost present into the flower so it's going to marry the picture together beautifully and if you see I'm leaving little areas that are white I'm grabbing white just white on my brush and when the paint is wet I'm gonna just get it right there and it's going to blend in really really nicely without too much effort and continuing filling in now we do have a stem that we are going to add this little guy and not to worry there is a little more blue somewhere there is still in the white and adding a little bit of the white right here now I'm gonna want to keep my edge perfect but when I'm painting I'm not gonna worry about that so after I'm done and it's dry I'm going to be really carefully adding my black edge because this little guy, this little painting, if it's on a wall and it has this perfect edge, it will be really, really cool. At this point, we don't have a perfect edge except on this side. So we are almost perfect right here, but I'm still going to touch it up and make it better. So I'm going to take the green and kind of without washing the brush, finding where my flower is looking, 
And I'm going to pretend that the stem is coming from the center, but I'm not touching the center. I'm going to come and follow that line and place it right here. So I followed where the stem is coming from, curving it where I want it to go and placing it down. Looking pretty good. So I'm going to take another green color, which is like an olive color, and I'm just going to add a little bit more to that. I'm going to wash my brush because the flower needs to be much, much cleaner. Now the center, even though the center is inside, there's pieces that are standing out of the center. So the center is going to be something that I will most likely start my painting with and end with. So grabbing same color as my background. What I want to do is not make it flat and I want to add more of a texture to it. So I dabbed around and I want to add even a little bit darker color and I'm using, because it's a small angle brush, I'm using that angle brush, small side, right, and adding this tiny, tiny little lines. So those tiny little lines are kind of following the direction where the flower is looking. From here, I will go in and I'm gonna get a little bit of the white and a little bit of that blue that I started with. And I am going to use these lines to get from the center out. And this is the part where we wanna move fast. The reason why is I want to get in there with different colors when this is still wet. So this blue needs to be wet for me to make it and blend it nicely. I'm gonna steal a little bit of yellow and I'll add it to my very light blue. And you have to be careful with yellow and blue because yellow and blue is going to create a color that we don't necessarily is gonna want, gonna wanna have in a white flower. So I added a few brush strokes. Now it looks a little messy, but the reason why is because I wanna move real fast. This needs to be still wet. When I come from the outside of the flower in towards our center, blue center, and I'm going to get, and I'm gonna be reloading my brush with white quite a few times and I'm gonna come from the outside going in. The reason why I want my paints to be wet, every time I touch the blue paint, it's going to actually exchange with the white and my brush is going to get the blue paint back and tiny of that blue, blue paint is going to be present on the top of our flower. So this is super, super fast way of filling in that flower. Now we are going to have a lot more fun with that. So do you see how the paint transferred all the way to the top? I'm gonna want to make a little bit of a grayish blue. How do we make grayish blue? Is blue a little bit of black and white. So the blue needs to be more than the white and the black needs to be tiny bit because the black is a very strong color so it will overwhelm the flower so i know that those two petals and our flower is facing this direction those two petals on top which means i need to add more of a shadow on to the ones that are behind now all this needs to happen when my paint is still wet. So I'm going to go all around and it's helping when the painting is tiny. And I'm gonna add this kind of a separation. So do you see how I'm following the line of the petals? Those two are on top and the rest are overlapping, but they're behind. So those guys will need more shadow than my top little guys. 
and the shadow sometimes will go all the way around because this guy is casting it. So now we're going to go back to the center. And I wash my brush and when I wipe it from the napkin, I love this color. So I might want to go in from the outside of the petal in and just add a little bit of that dark, dark color and just another dimension to our flower. So that's what happens when we're playing around with art. You see something and you just want right away to experiment and add it into your art and pretty much see what's gonna happen because this is how we're gonna learn and we're gonna get better by experimenting, by trying something different. And if we like it, great. And if we don't, we're not gonna do it again. So by adding a little bit of shadow on the top of my leaves, it created an illusion that my leaves maybe are curving and maybe creating part of that shadow or they're not completely flat. And the way I sketched that, that um, flower was for you to see and to make it easy, but I really want to take most of that line away from here. So I'm going to go very gently with the white and touch it, not completely erase it, but just tone it down, just tone it down a bit. And let's take some yellow on my white brush and with a dry brush, which means I loaded the paint, but I wiped it. And with that white brush I, and dry brush, I'm just gonna brush in a very transparent yellow coming down our flower. Now it's time for our little baby brush because this is where our center is gonna happen. So I'm gonna use number two. As long as you have a brush that has a pretty good um, dip, you're fine. I'm gonna add a white center. Let's put our flower in the direction that it's looking and I'm gonna add little blobs of paint, not taking completely away what I have already created there. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the green and the blue. And remember again, try not to over mix. And I'm gonna create tiny little blobs again. Now I'm going in a round motion. I'm following our center, center, our oval. It's not gonna be a circle, it's going to be an oval. Now for me to continue this, I need to wait until it dries. Now there's a couple of things that you can do with something like that. You can make it more like a graphic and add a really nice outline with either a Sharpie or a paint marker, which is almost the same, almost. Um, and you can do it in gold or you can use paint to make this happen. I am going to try to use paint and after I'm done, because it needs to be completely dry if I'm using a paint marker, I probably will go back in with a golden marker and add some lines. So I'm facing my canvas straight down and I am going to semi outline, which means not completely go around and follow the line. There's lines that are a little thicker, there's lines that are thinner, and it's not a continuous line. And I'm gonna do the same thing. And I don't care if my hand is a little shaky, because that actually will help. I am forcing my hand to shake a little bit more. If I don't want my hand to be shaking, I will probably prop something on to this part and get down, but I want my hand to be a tiny bit shaky. And this 
is going to be the outline of the flower. It's going to give this a little bit more of a shape. And I'm going to go back inside and I'm using this brown. And I am going to add little lines. And where is our flower facing? It's facing 11 o'clock. So I am going to add those little things in the center. Kind of trying to go 11 o'clock. And the first ones will be darker. I can even go a little black. Not a lot, I'm still mixing it with the brown. And once that is done, we're getting closer and closer to where we want to be with our uh, flower, with our center. My paint is too wet and it's mixing, but I'm gonna try. So the top of each of those lines, I'm gonna add a little pushing, just the brush pushing the round brush down and adding a little element to. So I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Now, if my flower is center is dry, I'm gonna be a little bit more precise. Wash my brush and again, I'm gonna add a little bit of a yellow wash kind of in the shadowy parts. And if it gets a little bit too yellow, just wipe my brush or wash my brush and spread it around. I'm gonna add a few more lines just coming from the center. And some of them can come in the different directions, but most of them are gonna be really pointing at 11 o'clock. And then at the tip of those little lines, I'm gonna add a little tiny pocket. Now I need this to dry. I need my, my highlights to pop. So I am going to use yellow and white and try to get that in. And if it's not working, I'm gonna have to wait until it dries. And if it's working, that's gonna be great. It's semi-working, but if you're painting on your own, just wait for things to dry, or you can get your blow dryer and do that. Make the process a little bit faster. Let's get a little of the blue here. Why not? But I really would love to see how gold is going to look on that. So let's pull some gold. This is gold. So gold is a transparent color. So for the gold to really, really work, you need a darker background. So let's see. Is this enough or do I have to go with black? I think I think I'm gonna go with black and kind of repeat that brown process. And it's super super bold at this point, but I'm not worried because the gold is gonna tone it down a lot. And you don't have to just have one line for each thing. You can have multiple lines to make this flower look very interesting. And I'm gonna do the same for the center for me to add that gold. And 
don't want everything to be like perfect. Straight up, 11 o'clock. We want some movement. Now the center, I'm losing my center. So I'm gonna go back in with the white and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of the center. There it is. Go back. So wiping my brush is important because if it starts dripping, this is very little and it will kind of slow down the process. Is it the end of the world? If some accident happens, absolutely not. But it can make it harder. So I'm gonna clean a few areas that get a little bit extra paint. Just adding a little bit more shadow coming backwards on this flower. Why not? It just seemed too pure. Sometimes when I try to hold my paintbrush very, very light, I drop it. Center, I'm gonna go back in and drop a few dots. There you go. Now, the black seems to be drying pretty nicely. So I'm gonna go with the gold. And I loaded my brush, making sure there's not water. And I'm gonna add this gold to the black. It's gonna be really, really cool. And it's gonna tone it down a lot. I'm reloading my brush a lot. I don't want to spread that paint, the golden paint. I want to add it, a lot of it on top. So I'm depositing plenty of that. And now I'm going to go to the center. And I'm trying to use just the tip of my brush to add this. And pretty much every single line, I'm going back and getting a little bit of that gold. Add so much to it. It's 
So this one is a zero. I'm loading it. And I'm just trying to go inside. Really fine, fine. But again, um, if you don't have darker color under your black, it's not gonna show. Your gold is transparent. This is pretty much it. Now one last thing that it's left for me to clean my sides. So this is pretty much what's gonna happen is me going in and just cleaning the sides, making sure this corners are perfect because when it's sitting when it's sitting on the wall, that's gonna make it really cool. Giving it as a gift that will be cool. I'm gonna try to paint that on a bottle. Mother's Day is coming, so that will be a cool thing to do for your best friend, for anybody out there that is a mom. And it needs very little to fix that. Crevices on the side of the canvas. Pretty much that looks like. Yeah, almost good. Almost a full circle around. Our little little guy is done. I'm going to initial it. I'm gonna use my little baby brush and I'm gonna use a brownish color which will kind of represent maybe the golden. So it's going to be the beige. And I'm going to sign where there is more space and it's on the top so i'm gonna sign it on the top so the consistency of the paint when you're signing needs to be more like a watercolor um and you don't want your brush to be dripping that's gonna be just making very thick lines you're loading your brush and your brush is loaded by pulling and i'm loading my brush and taking the excess so i'm leaving a really nice tip for the brush and that's it signatures there didn't even get into the flower love it and we are good to go so we have a little uh, flower with gold edges and it shimmers and it sparkles so that is a perfect perfect little painting to give to mothers friends whoever or just keep it for yourself all right so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you did by giving me thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that notification button to get future notifications for obviously future videos and i hope to see you again same place thanks bye